everybody. I'm Jarrett Reddick. And this is a podcast. Jarrett goes to the movies. Hopefully you have seen or heard one of my many musical endeavors. And if you have, then you know how much I love movies. This is movie commentary with no movie knowledge. This podcast is me and my friend Rich talking about movies that we like. But my name's on it because I'm famous. This is Jarrett goes to the movies. Still. Okay, we're starting now. Saturday, March 24th, 1984. Shermer High School, Shermer, Illinois. 60062. Dear Mr. Vernon, we accept the fact that we had to sacrifice a whole Saturday in detention for whatever it was we did wrong. What we did was wrong. But we think you're crazy to make us write an essay telling you who we think we are. What do you care? When you see us as you want to see us. In the simplest terms, the most convenient definitions. You see us as a brain, an athlete, a basket case, a princess, and a criminal. Correct? That's the way we saw each other at 7 o'clock this morning. We were brainwashed. My God, that's early on a Saturday. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> and where's all this breakfast we were oh, promised? Oh, come off come it. Come on. No, they had lunch. They had breakfast before they got there. Yeah, but why is it called Breakfast Club? Because it's in the morning. Yeah, it's that's in the, the thing. morning. But so they don't mention that anywhere in the entire movie. Breakfast? Yeah. The only time they mention the word breakfast is at the very end of the movie when he says, sincerely, Breakfast Club. Right? I wonder... The, well, the, so you, and, well, you think he's just confused because Rich is a part of a brunch club. Yeah, exactly. And they yeah. say brunch club seriously. all the fucking time. Yes. Hey, <laughs> yeah. my friend in the brunch club <laughs> yeah. the other day, we That's were at right. brunch club and uh, the funniest thing happened to uh, my I friend that s- was in the brunch club. And then, yes, we had mimosas and fucking this crepes and all jealousy shit. coming out right now. You're all right. jealousy. It is because I'm not... <laughs> I'm not the fucking <laughs> VP of a brunch club. Not everybody has to say club, Rich. Just it's the Breakfast Club. We we'll know talk it's, about that's what we're it is. We're going to talk okay. about clubs in just a minute too. But there was an hour cut out of this movie, so I wonder if it, if you know, I, I don't really. They probably, feel like, probably met in the cafeteria. They probably had some breakfast. <laughs> some and breakfast. It first. just got cut out. Yeah. One hundred percent. So, so stop fucking with the movie. I actually think that I think there had to have been a deleted scene where they mentioned something about a breakfast club or something. So I know we haven't even sense we haven't even really started the show yet. But you're right. So he even destroyed the negatives to the deleted scene, so nobody would ever see it. Oh, really? Yeah. So it's it's he wanted it to be two and a half hours. So for a two and a half hour movie, it would have been shot at like three and a half hours, wow. and then then whittled down to an hour and Why a half. Why would he do that? I don't know. That's weird. Okay. Hey, everybody. My name is Jarrett, and this is Jarrett goes. To to the movies with me as always is Rich. Hello. And uh Casey will not be joining us today. She's at a wedding. You can't say with me as always is Casey anymore. You're no. gonna have to say usually Usually me. Casey. Well, I, she's at a wedding. You know, I don't know what time she'll be back, but chances are if we go long, she could come in and be and like super be hammered. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she's Ubering back. Okay, good. Yeah. But we do have the Lovely Mark Yant with us. Marcus. I am lovely. Casey's dad is here, and Rich woke him from an afternoon nap. <laughs> How does that work now on Sundays for you? Okay, so during football season, it's a good luck nap for your Cowboys, which yes, you, a I, rally I, nap, a rally nap. I feel like your your napping did not. I gotta help be this honest year. with you, I didn't get a lot of naps. See, you so fucked it all I, up. I feel personally responsible <laughs> for the Cowboys' shitty season. Wow. <laughs> Today we're talking about the Breakfast Club. <clears throat> Five high school students, all different stereotypes, meet in detention where they pour their hearts out to each other and discover how they have a lot more in common than they thought. Of course, Rich has defined controversy and everything, so uh, the, obviously the title didn't work. It just happens to be like one of the most popular movies of all time. Yeah, sure. Interesting that it came out in 1985. We pick a lot of movies from that year. Hmm. Cause did, uh, weird. Mm, that's weird. <laughs> Is also, there, wasn't there a also, song about Yeah, I have a huge hit song called 1985. Oh, really? Well. Yeah, huge. <laughs> I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't really think about There's that. There's a couple of gold records right behind you. And, oh, uh, that's why. It's always behind me. That's why I didn't know. <laughs> that's right. You sit, I, I well, sit down. I make Rich sit where he can Grammy. see them because when he gives me any shit about music, I just point. <laughs> oh, I know. That was, the, that was the best of Rich posting pictures of his twin screen recording studio. As, uh, look what I have here. And Jared goes, yep, only missing the gold records. He's like... <laughs> 
Touche, <laughs> sir. Yeah, well just, played. He was like, damn it. Well played, <laughs> But Jared. I do have three screens, not two. So. <laughs> it's like NASA in there. Yeah. What is, you use one just runs porn all the time and then the other two are for recording? <laughs> no, one's got to be for like his Tinder profile. 100%. And that is a fucking great yeah. observation. That's one. You're just sitting there waiting for beeps. And the other one is just watching <laughs> Apple stock and shit, you know, waiting for it to drop point so he can call you. <laughs> Hey, what the fuck happened to your Apple products, Jared? Huh? Oh, sorry to hear about that, man. Uh, hey, they had a good run, you know? That's perfect. The Breakfast Club. Man, I'm going to be honest, first watch in quite some time, and I'll be brief with the story that happened today. I was out last night watching the Steelers win and go further into the playoffs. I had a few beverages. So mm-hmm. needless to say, I was moving Weird. a little slow this morning. Um, and so Casey came and actually woke me up and said, hey, Rich is going to be here pretty soon. You need to get in here and watch the movie. And so I'm like, yeah, okay. So I text Rich. I'm like, hey, man, I, I woke up late. I'm gonna, I'm watching it now. And of course, he calls me an asshole. And, and I'm ruining the fucking day. And, he's, <laughs> and, you, and the thing is, is it just gave you another hour at brunch club anyway. <laughs> I know. It's not like you really gave a shit. <laughs> Uh, so I come out and, and Casey's got the movie queued up and she went to Sonic and got me a breakfast burrito and a, so I ate that and I began watching the movie and then Rich came over and, uh, he comes in, I go, man, this is a long movie. And he looks at me a little funny and and I'm watching. He goes, yeah, you realize that we're not doing the matrix today. (laughs) We're doing the breakfast club. I watched the wrong fucking movie. And it was so sweet because Casey had come in there and got me, like made sure that I was prepared, like just being insanely awesome as she always is but she queued up the wrong she's fucking the dude. most amazing sweetest worst wife ever. <laughs> she, anyway so we came in and we did a google hangout with some of our patreon supporters um, and if you would like to get in on that you can go to patreon.com p-a-t-r-e-o-n and search Jarrett goes to the movies and uh, you could be hanging out with us later this month and you get to hear pre-show and deleted scenes and things like that so anywho uh, so I've seen the matrix now Right. And uh, so I had to sit up here after we did the Google Hangout with our supporters. Uh, Rich went down and watched The Matrix, and I stayed in the studio and watched The Breakfast Club. <laughs> I've seen two fucking movies today. We did it, Jerry. That's like the most productive Sunday I've had and since football started. <laughs> I'm glad I watched it. I said this to Rich earlier on. I thought, again, and I've done this in the past where I'm just, man, I don't even need to watch that. I, right. I, I know it like the back of my hand, whatever. And how well do we actually know the back of our hands, by the way? <laughs> I don't know if that I could pick mine out of a lineup. So I did watch the movie, and I'm glad I did. It is a good. Yeah. It's a good watch. And you Gosh. see it different at this age. So too, what? Thirty years later? That's crazy. Did you enjoy it? Because I just knew you were going to come in here and just be. No, I wrong. enjoyed it. It still resonated. Why it was such an important movie for that time period for the that age. It's an important movie. And it should it really been. is, yeah. It was a movie that was needed at that time, I think. I mean, it was good. I mean, it, there are tons of holes in it. There are tons of, like, just why did they do that? But overall, I mean, you still can't discount how important, how awesome it was for people that age. He pretty much nailed it. But, you know, that's the way things were. I mean, they I get mean, into so many things of how clicky life was for us back then. You know, where I went to school, that was the thing. I mean, football players hung out with football players. Jocks hung out with jocks. Right. Um, nerds hung out with nerds. Um, socials hung out we were called, socials. We were called Greasers hung out with greasers. We were called yeah, freaks, we're, actually. So, here. like, long-haired, oh. long-haired people were called freaks back then. So we were we were freaks, and then it became yeah. headbangers. We haven't talked about that. What what were you in high school? Well, I was lucky. Um, I, I, was, uh, I was a class clown. So I pretty much crossed over all lines. So I was everybody's friend. Mm-hmm. Um, but, I mean, I had really long hair, and I wore black T-shirts every day, and I was a metal kid. That said, I wrote the quarterback for the football team's English papers for him, and so nobody ever gave me any shit. <laughs> I was never picked on once. And I was the class clown, too, that even the teachers liked because I would make them laugh. I really wouldn't try to make them look stupid. Right. So it's that's an art, you know, you because yeah. you disrupt the I don't class. Think I nailed that art, right? So you can disrupt the class and be an asshole, but you can disrupt the class and have them in on it, and 
it would, you know, then it would get to a point where they're like, okay, Jared. <laughs> but in a sweet way. Yeah, so it's so funny. I'm Facebook friends with as many of my high school teachers as I can remember. But anyway, that it was, it was divided like that. And, you know, it, you could see, you know, walk, you walk into the cafeteria and you see the little sections of people. You yeah. Know? No, yeah. ours was the same way. Um, I mean, of course, some people would float. But it's it's pretty rare. Um, I was also the class clown. I moved around a lot, so I was you know in different places every few years. And then so you I, moved to Kansas, and you got really popular. That's right. But I had to be I had to be funny because that's yeah. A I had to diffuse situations. Sure. Um, because I'm the new kid getting picked on yep. kind of thing. So I had mm-hmm. to be able to diffuse it with humor if someone's picking on me or whatever. You know, screw you, new kid kind of thing. Um, and then it was just and then I just found it an easy way to sort of let get everybody to put their guard down so that I could be accepted yeah. into the group as well. Funny keeps you alive. I mean, yeah. it really does. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's an interesting thing because I, I'm not saying that I wasn't ever in a situation where I was like, this guy's going to kick the shit out of me, but mm-hmm. you're right. I could definitely defuse it pretty quickly with just a couple of random yeah. jokes. And and sometimes I would push it a little far and, and insult the person. Yeah. And, and, it, and it, I had to figure out a way to get, my mouth out of trouble when I yeah got, exactly yeah, same because I because I'm Mister if something's not logical to me I will point yeah. it out so you you've always been it. like yeah and it grew as I got older obviously but yeah I would always well that doesn't make sense and I would say something about it and then I had to whoa I got to be funny now to get myself out of the situation that I just got into my brother was the the popular kid he was on what they call the, he was on the Raider crew which was like the dudes that do the flags at the football games and stuff he was in all the clubs and and he was that dude right. And there was a weird thing with my parents and me when I got into high school because I wasn't that, you know, I didn't really care about any of those Mm -hmm. things. I got invited to all the dances or whatever, but I really didn't go. I think their involvement with his school, it was so important to them. And then me, I didn't give a shit about anything. I was, well, I mean, I was in the theater and I, and I did the marching band and that was it, you know? So, um, so if you had to say what combination of all five of these kids what would you say? Um, well, I'd probably lean more towards Bender at the end. Okay. Um, so end of uh, high school or at the end? No, of no, the, no. At the end of the movie, the where he okay. kind of gets where he lets go of his shell or whatever, because he's he's a he's an accepting guy. When he comes to the defense of Brian, uh, when Claire uh, is saying, you know, we're not going to be friends on Monday, you know, and he's like, you are a bitch, because that's a fucking fucked up thing, right. man. I mean, I was nice to everybody, everybody. And took up for, I mean, so like if, if there was somebody who was getting shit or whatever, I could figure out a way to make it stop. Mm-hmm. And I've always been like that. So, I mean, I'm like that now. I mean, I'm like yeah. that with like band guys and stuff that like my bandmate and people on vacation. And Ryan has been in situations where I'm like, you should just let me talk to that guy because <laughs> this is <laughs> fucked up. You right. know, so I mean, I, I was smart, but not that smart. I definitely wasn't nerdy. I definitely wasn't the Ali Sheedy character. I definitely didn't wear the right clothes and I wasn't a jock, so... Mm-hmm. I guess I'd have to be more of that Bender character. I did have a smart mouth. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, right. I, I I did. Um, I mean, yeah, I didn't smoke and stuff. I didn't really drink. How about you? I was kind of a jock. I played, I mean, kind of a jock. I mean, I was playing soccer in high school, which in Texas, I don't even think they consider that a sport. They do now. I now, mean, but back then, back not then, so no. Much I mean, I, there, I, I remember this one thing. I was, we were, first of all, we had this tiny little locker room where the football players had this giant, huge sure. gym and everything. Well, one literally one time, we were allowed to go in and work out at the gym. I guess they pulled strings. So we were, we were able to work out at their gym, so we worked out. And then the football coaches came in, and we needed to go because it was their time to for their football guys. And so we're single-file line, walking out, and the coaches are all leaned up against the wall as we're passing them, walking out of the gym. And the fucking coach called us a bunch of communists. What? That doesn't make any sense. He called it no. I mean, because you guys were the soccer guys. Yeah, he calls us a bunch of communists to kids. Yeah, this children, guys, man. These grown men are such Neanderthal knuckle draggers that they're calling a bunch of kids who are just trying to get right. good communist. And that stuck with me so bad. And that's probably one of the reasons I fucking hate football to this day. The soccer players were like all the cute dudes. I mean, those yeah, guys thanks. got all the pussy, thanks. all of it. I mean, the football dudes were all just like big, lunky, just, I mean, you know, like the quarterback when I first got into high school was was super popular, but really they were just like, we had a a few football players that that did get all of it, but uh, no, I mean, we had our, we did okay. 
Also, marching band, if you want to get laid, that's the way to fucking do it, man. What happens <laughs> on that to, bus is crazy. <laughs> but you have to have sex with the marching band girls. That's, yeah, you're you're kind of you're kind of pigeonholed. Of- <laughs> I'm gonna say though, it's you know, it's not as bad as you think. We went out with the drill team and the cheerleaders. And, uh, no, drill team was was on because we traveled with the drill oh, team. Oh, did you? Yeah, okay. yeah. No, no cheerleaders didn't. were completely fucking off off limits, <laughs> and that wasn't happening. It was the opposite for us. Yeah. The drill team was the top dogs. The cheerleaders were underneath. Oh no, they band. used to call the fucking what did they call the drill team? The horrorcore. Horrorcore. That's exactly what it was. That's funny. They fucking called them the horror core. And I mean, like, I mean, <laughs> that's so fucked up. And they knew it. I mean, they knew that they were Ours in the horror. was not like that. See, but the thing is, I was in the marching band, but I was kind of king of the dipshits because I was like the popular kid that was in marching band. Right. So, and I was a drummer. And at the time, that was like this Did you do drums badge in of honor. the... In the marching band, yeah. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. So that Drums was like were, a badge of honor. Yeah, that too. was definitely. And there were like a few of us that had like really long hair. And so like at the pet rallies, we'd like bang our heads and shit. And people thought it was great. Right, so. yeah. Um, Mark, I don't really know anything about your high school days except for you were already in a band and you were out playing and stuff already, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean like later, junior, junior year, I was playing out. Yeah. Like little clubs and stuff like that. In Paris? Or did you guys actually travel any? No, we did. Yeah. Um, I don't remember if it was in high school or right out, but we had, we had gone to Memphis and uh, Louisiana. We did a little bit of traveling, actually. I mean, Memphis is a is far for a seventeen year old kid in Paris, Texas. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, that's crazy. But, uh, yeah, it was kind of a thing, man. I, I regret it now because that's all we did. You know, it became okay. Yep. We rehearsed every night. Yep, and we missed a lot of parties. Same and, here. You know, a lot of stuff that I wish I would have went back and and was able to to be involved in it. But then again, I was doing what I love, to play my guitar. It is now 7.06. You have exactly eight hours and 54 minutes to think about why you ponder the error of your ways. You may not talk. You will not move from these seats. And you will not sleep. All right, people, we're going to try something a little different today. We are going to write an essay of no less than a thousand words describing to me who you think you are. Because I love the line that comes next, where Judd Nelson goes, what, is this a test? And he goes, by essay, I mean essay. (laughs) Not one word typed over and over and over again. My teacher told me to turn in my essay, and I said, I'm no snitch. (laughs) I think they nailed the teacher. My only problem is... Why did he go in an office across the hall? Why didn't he just sit in a desk and read this newspaper? I know. I thought about that, too. The whole movie would have been – there wouldn't have been a movie. Right. I don't know. They could have come up with some reason to show why, weirdly, he's not in the room because I've never once been in a study hall where the teacher wasn't sitting at the desk in front or whatever, but I don't know. Because he wanted to go fuck off. He he was sitting there for nine hours on a Saturday, too. Yeah, he didn't really – he just didn't – He didn't care. He didn't want to do his own thing. Yeah, yeah. know. if they had kind of addressed a little bit of that where he like mumbled to himself, I'm not sitting here with these dumbasses. I'm going to go in here. You know what I mean? Exactly. Something. I don't know. That would have been fine for me. But. I don't really feel like I needed that. I mean, no, I feel like I it's implied. Know. I didn't you know? And okay. the, the, the thing is that okay. he's there. He doesn't really fucking care to be there. Is that clear, Mr. Bender? Crystal. Is Judd Nelson the main character? I would think so. I mean, he's the poster boy. You know, I mean, he's the guy, yeah, with the, the walking the across raised. the football field yeah. with the arm raise and whatever. It's I mean, an ensemble, though. I definitely think it's an ensemble, but I would say that he he has the most... He's, co- the, he's the protagonist and sure. the antagonist, I think, at the same time. Like, he stirs up the trouble. He's the antagonist. Yeah. And then at the end, he's the one that, that is sort of the hero. He saves sure. them, you know. It, so if you think like, about it, there's oh, not a lot of scenes without him. Right. I mean, it follows him to the gym. It follows him to the other right. room. You know, again... So many things that he says are are just, you know, timeless quotes. And I found out that um, a lot of it was ad-libbed. So he encouraged them to ad-lib. So even Neo Maxi Zoom Dweeby, he just made that shit up. Are you serious? Cuff. I hated that line, by the and way. And the most interesting thing that, that is, is that he and John Hughes did not get along. Oh, all. really? John Hughes did not like him. Almost fired him. Because wow. he, uh, because of his attitude and the way that he treated Molly Ringwald off camera, and the teacher guy, he convinced John Hughes to keep him on the film because he's just staying in character, just being an asshole uh. all the time. So, <laughs> you know, that's that's pretty interesting. I mean, you know, and that, and that had to have been interesting if he was being a jerk the whole time because you got Emilio Estevez, who's from acting royalty, right. 
and has already done a number of things right. that were successful. Also, who I think is not a good actor. I don't think he's a good actor. Emilio? Yeah. Uh, I no. would. I definitely wouldn't say he's one of the best, but I mean, I don't know. He's There's some cool... I mean, you ever see... Uh, it's better than Drew Barrymore, but... You ever see Repo Man? Yeah. yeah Great that movie. So John Hughes is the director and writer of this movie. Obviously, yeah. I've made my feelings for John Hughes known, and, yeah. and may he rest in peace. Emilio Estevez, Judd Nelson, Molly Ringwald, Anthony Michael Hall, Ali Sheedy, who I had the biggest crush on ever... Uh, and Paul Gleason, who played the teacher. Maybe you'll learn a little something about yourself. Maybe you'll even decide whether or not you care to return. Uh, yeah, you know, I can answer that right now, sir. You know, that'd be no, no for me. Cause Sit down, Johnson. Most of these clips are going to be sort of a love letter to Anthony Michael Hall. He is so good in this. I think, after watching this movie, that he could be one of the best child actors ever. It's, it's I love he is he's he great. Sells it. He's great. He he, he plays the character it. so well. Yes. I th- you know the one thing that bothered me in it was just looking at him in the movie. You know, he seems small and nerdy or whatever, and I didn't notice it until today, but when he stands up and the the two the uh, Emilio oh, and yeah. uh, they're about to fight, he's fucking <laughs> 6 inches taller than both of them. Right. You know, and he's just towering over them, and he's the nerdy kid or whatever. Right. And it, it, it just, you know, one of those things. I never noticed it before, right. but you're exactly right. The whole who am I? Who am I? I'm a walrus. With the, and then taking off the jacket at the same time as Judd Nelson. He's yeah. taking off his, and then he just pretends he's like, oh, man, it's cold in here. <laughs> Blowing on his hands. Right. Just Oh, he just plays that so well. I got a question. Does Barry Manilow know that you raid his wardrobe? Give you the answer to that question, Mr. Bender, next Saturday. Don't mess with the bull, young man. You'll get the horns. Two quotes that I I have used my entire life right there in that one little 20-second clip. Don't mess with the bull, son. You'll get the horns. Mm -hmm. Say all the time. And uh, does Barry Manilow know you raid his wardrobe? I said that all the time when I was a kid. This opening scene especially, or and, and I, I guess it's not really the opening scene, but this the first 30 minutes of the movie has shit that I, I have said a thousand times. And watching this the first time, like, did you find a coolness to Judd Nelson? Did you think that he was cool? Did you like were you buying into it the way that the teacher says he's trying to get you to? I would always get hung up on his pants being too long. <laughs> Right, <laughs> they tucked it up boots. at the bottom. Tucked into his I get boots. so hung up on that. You're that's... down with OCD, yeah, you know me. <laughs> oh my god! But that's one thing I remembered from his character was other, that other his pants his, were way too long. Other than his wardrobe, let, let's talk. Let's talk a little deeper, Rich. Let's, what let's I talk mean about is, I know what you mean, but that was the. That... Did you sort of think? I mean, man, that guy's cool. He says the things we all want to say. No, I kinda. think he was. He's the typical bully where he's super insecure. He has a shitty home life, and he fucking takes it out on everybody else. You know, I mean, obviously, the movie wants you to think deeper of him, but the the caricature that he's playing, that nails it. I mean, it's you've mm-hmm. got a shitty home life, and you're taking out it on everybody else. Yeah, she even says that to him. She says, you're afraid. Right. That is the way that those people are. I mean, the, the people that have a problem. It's like you with Max. You know, you're scared of Macintosh. <laughs> I'm scared of shittiness. You're, You're right. Scared <clears throat> of apples. What is your problem with apples? Did you find out that a girl once had an Adam's apple? And you're like, <laughs> fucking, what happened? And then you just reach down there, and then it's twig and berries too. You know, I think each character was so well represented. I think the the Ali Sheedy character kind of to me. I guess if I were to have to pick one that I sort of couldn't figure out and it didn't really belong, because like I mean, I guess she's just the weird kid. I guess. Well, those you didn't have those in your school, and maybe so. Maybe as I'm <clears throat> saying that, oh, we had tons of those. In maybe as I'm saying it, I'm realizing you know what it's 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 pretty perfect because definitely knew the jock, knew the popular girl, knew the bender guy, knew the nerd guy, and you're right, there were just the weirdo kids yeah, who just were just weirdos. fucking weird. I mean, and they just you know burst out dancing for no reason and shit, you know, yeah. like that kind of thing, right? And you and and they're the ones that you would always hear these crazy rumors about. Hey, what? If I lose my temper, you're total, man. Totally? Totally. Why don't you just shut up? Nobody here is interested. Really? Butt face. Well, hey, Sporto, what'd you do to get in here? Forget to wash your jock? Oh, excuse me, fellas. I think we should just write our papers. Look, just because you live in here doesn't give you the right to be a pain in the ass, so knock it off. Hey, there's a lot 
that goes on in that scene. So in theater, the thing was, is he would let people do scenes from movies for a grade. He had to do a scene every six weeks. And so this scene was played. I mean, everybody did it. What a great point. idea. How come my theater teacher didn't do that? You didn't you could you guys couldn't do movies? We just we did, did like a co- plays every time. You had audition for the plays. Theater arts was just a class. Yeah, it was in our class, but we just did plays in our class. Like no. the whole class was just us learning the next play. We did scenes and then we talked about I mean, you know, like that's Always how got I, the lead, by the way. That's how Always I lost my accent. Like we and it does come back when I drink beer, but you know, good diction and breathing, learn how to breathe and So you had a like a country, dare I say hick, Dude, you've heard accent. my mom talk. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> I mean, I talked to my brother on the phone, I'm just like, Did I used to fucking sound like that? <laughs> It's, I mean, it, it's nuts. And what's funny is, is that, and I hate this because my family talks like that, but to me, when a, when a person has a really, really thick accent like that, their IQ to me, like, just plummets, <laughs> you know? And it's yeah. bad because that's Don't talk about so Mark like terrible. That. Man, I ain't talk like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Your my, foul my, stench. My mama would call it, hey, baby, it's mama. I'm just calling to see what she's doing. Hey, I'm cooking. So just call me back when you can. Hey, is your mama now? <laughs> Your mom and them, yeah. They live way up in Decatur. I don't mind that accent as much. I just hate L dropping. L dropping is where I draw the line. I told you something. I told you something. Yeah. That's where I draw the line. That's where, 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 like, you, that's where IQ is like, I don't like, even know boom, where you come across gone. that. I'm... In England, they invented the language, but they have silent fucking T's there. So it's like electricity. Right. It's like, there's a fucking T in there. Yeah. <laughs> then they have all their own little fucking thing, clicks just like we do. So it's like, the, like you said, the Cockney accent. They you do. Know? Yeah, sure. Like, so anytime I try to sound like an English person, I sound like Dick Van Dyke, yeah. which is still Cockney. Yeah. And it's not real. I mean, it's that's that's a very, very prim and proper kind of thing. But yes, you're right. And they like to put a U after an O in like the word flavor and color. <clears> so <throat> it's there's just a fucking random U in there. <laughs> or a fucking E in shit. At the end <laughs> all and of that. The, yeah, they will put and, an E on shit. Why yeah. not? I'm not quite sure the E's going to do it. Let's add a T at the end as well, but it'll be silent. <laughs> what the fuck just happened? It's like the Monty Python female right there. We can't have any kind of party. We're burning. Checking us out every few seconds. You know, the door's supposed to stay open. <laughs> you love Michael Anthony. I do. You love Michael He's, Anthony, I huh? do, man. He's so you awesome. didn't have the same... Did you have the same love for him as Rusty when we did Vacation? I don't know if yeah. you did. Yeah, 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 yeah definitely. Yeah. You know, Bender, you don't even count. I mean, if you disappear forever, it wouldn't make any difference. You may as well not even exist at this school. What I like about this is you feel like it doesn't have any bearing on the way Judd Nelson feels or whatever, the way the Bender character feels. However, he memorizes this and repeats it back to him later in the movie. So mm-hmm. you do see that it affected words him. cut. You yeah. know, even if you blow it off and pretend like, hey, you know what, I'm invincible, like right. everything bounces off of me, you take that shit to heart. It's kind of like you can make a comment in passing about somebody's appearance or something. And they'll never forget it. I thought Judd Nelson's performance was really good. Like, I could really read. Like, as a kid, I didn't notice any of this. Right. He's the bully. He's the jock. He's Mm -hmm. the nerd. Right. At the end, they come together, and they're all friends. Do you you consider him the bully? You keep saying that. Because to me, I don't don't really think I saw him as a bully. Well, when you come in there and and start talking shit I just feel like he's just like that dude. The guy that smokes cigarettes and, like you know, doesn't give a shit about anything, but I don't feel like he's, like, you picking on people. Really? Talking about the virgin and the sex stuff? That was that's fucked bullying. up, but that is, to me, almost just because she is who she is. Because the because she's eating fucking sushi. Just because of all of but that. But are you seeing like, the nuance now because you're older and you understand nuance? Maybe. Or when, did you see that when you no, were a kid? I, I, I didn't I think see it was, him it was as a verbal, bully. It was verbal abuse, you know what I mean? Because yeah. just... Oh, what do we have here? I see all the the food groups are you know represented yes, here. Yes, yeah. It's just fucking yeah. with people, and that's the same thing as bullying. Exactly. You're right. You're I see right. what he's saying. Okay. Now, it's, now, it's not necessarily about you know um, bumping not, bumping shoulders in the hallway, kind of bullying. Yeah, you know, not that trash can. More <laughs> more just like fucking just terrorizing, just showing someone that verbally, you have power over verbally them. abusing. That them, makes a lot of sense. Trying now. to push I mean, as many and going as into you that, can. going into the whole the food group thing and all of that stuff, and he just completely fucked him. Even the and I'd say this all the time, but the excuse me, 
what are you babbling about? <laughs> when he asked him, you know, he's, oh, I was just saying that I'm in the, the math club and the <laughs> physics right. physics club. Now, that makes sense. I guess he would so, be more of a bully than what I'm giving him credit okay, for. Okay, so being. back to my point, which was when I was a kid, I just saw him very cut and dry. When I watch it now, I see all the nuance in Judd Nelson's performance. Yeah. And I could see the vulnerability seeping through. I could see the insecurity in his eyes when, when the jock is talking to him yeah. and, and calling him out on stuff. You know, mm-hmm. he's trying to be tough, but he's really not that tough. But no. I didn't see that when I was a kid. I totally see that now. Yeah. I totally saw it. And I just thought his performance was really good. Yeah, the fear in his eyes when the teacher's telling yeah. him to hit him. Yeah. That is very fucking well acted. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, he looks legitimately terrified. Right. And any child would be. Right. You know, I mean, maybe not this day and age, because now they'll just fucking punch you. Yeah, they will. It's, it's, things have come a long way in 30 years. Because their friend is videotaping, and they're right. going to be exactly. famous as long as it happens. Come on, Bender, don't screw around. What are you going to do? Drop dead, I hope. Fuck it guy! Bender, that's, that's school property there. I mean, that's, you know, it doesn't belong to us. It's something not to be toyed with. <laughs> fucking not, best, love it. man. Not, not to be toyed with. School <laughs> property. Um, doesn't belong to us. I fucking yeah. just love that. The thing is, though, I don't know that there's a screw that even does oh, that. Right. You know, and, and you can't, especially can't fucking take it out with your fingers. <laughs> you know? Like, yeah. it's, it's really? Po- it's possible. Yeah, okay. We got a construction worker on site here, a yeah. remodeler. General contractor. Home. General he contractor. Doesn't he have fingerless gloves? He yes, does? He does. Yeah. yeah, I could totally pull it off. Really? Yeah. Yeah, just by like knuckling it up in there or something? Well, or? it's just it's just sheet metal. By the way, I had those gloves because Vince Neil had those gloves. <laughs> no, his were white with sparkles. No, no, no. He had those gloves too. Oh, okay. Yeah, because no, white with sparkles was theater of pain. Before then, they were oh, fucking. Okay. Back when they were tough. They were tough. <laughs> then they got tough again, though. Sort they of. got like bikery, you know? Remember, You're putting quotes around tough every you time. You know what's fucking right? crazy about them is, is they were like a band and Tommy Lee had one tattoo of Mighty Mouse and then they yeah. come back <clears throat> one record later and they're completely sleeved. Like just <laughs> right. like all they did was get tattoos on the break. That break. was all their front <laughs> That was it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Drugs and tattoos. Yeah, 100%. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Andrew Clark, get up here. Come on, front and center. Let's go. Hey, how come Andrew gets to get up? That's right. If he gets up, we'll all get up. It'll be anarchy. <laughs> Dude. Watch, watch the magazines. It's out of my hands. <laughs> <laughs> That's very clever, sir. But what if there's a fire? I think violating fire codes and endangering the lives of children would be unwise at this juncture in your career, sir. <laughs> All right. What are you doing with this? What are you doing with it? Get, get out of here, for God's sake. It's his fault. <laughs> What's the matter with you? Come on. Well, you know the school comes equipped with fire exits at either end of the library. Show Dick some respect. Let's go. He's, he's got this little. He's got his little flight attendant. <laughs> he fingers, does, yeah, totally. The two fingers, yeah, on opposite ends of the library. Back yeah, and, forth. Oh and my God, again, just, just in this small clip. Yes, three or four quotes that I have said my whole life. It's so crazy, just how much they packed into this. But yeah. I just noticed the flight attendant thing today. Yeah. So I had never put that together that he does that. You know, there comes equipped <laughs> with the two with fingers. Two, two, I don't fingers. remember that. I, I got to be honest with you. I also watched The Matrix <laughs> on the way. So I'm, I'm doing all this from from memory. <laughs> yeah. I just I too got confused. <laughs> yeah. Well, it happens. I got to be honest uh, with you. It I, happens. I I, uh, I question your producer because I I also watched The Matrix. No, it was. Uh, I gotta I gotta throw Casey under the bus on that one. It was just uh, that's the way that it went. But. Yeah, there goes personal responsibility for you. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> That's the thing. I was just doing, I'm just trying to get, I, honestly, I'm just thinking, as I'm watching The Matrix, thinking the whole time, like, if I cancel this, Rich is going to be fucking pissed, but he won't act like he's mad, but he will be. <laughs> he'll sniff it. He's got to do it. No, that's fine. Yeah. Oh, my God. He does that little sniff thing. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. I always do sniff. No, it'll be fine. I can just stay at brunch a little longer. <laughs> <laughs> Not a big deal. Oh, man. So if he gets up, we'll all get up. It'll be anarchy. anarchy. So great. And uh, then show Dick some respect. Show Dick some respect. Oh, my God. And then, and then the, the best, and not the best, not that you missed something in the clip, but I love when Andrew sits back down and he just goes, I expected more from a varsity letterman. Yes, yeah. <laughs> just yeah, like, that's awesome. this was your fault. Be careful of the magazines. Eat my shorts. You just bought yourself another Saturday, Mr. Crushed. You just bought one more right there. Well, I'm free the Saturday after that. Beyond that, I'm going to have to check my calendar. Good, because it's going to be filled. We'll keep going. You want another one? Say the word. Just say the word. Instead of going to prison, you'll come here. 
Are you through? No. I'm doing society a favor. So? That's another one right now. I've got you for the rest of your natural born life if you don't watch your step. You want another one? Yes. yes. You got it. You got another one right there. That's another one, pal. Cut it out. Stop it. She starts to tear. Not even close. But. but good. You got one more right there. You really think I give a shit? Another. You through? How many is that? That's seven, including the moment we first came in. You asked Mr. Vernon here whether Barry Mandelon knew that he raided his closet. <laughs> now it's eight. You stay up. Excuse me, sir. It's seven. Shut up, Pee Wee. <laughs> Pee Wee. <laughs> so, dude, eat my shorts. Yeah. I mean, that was huge. Yeah. Is that an ad lib too? I I don't know. I mean, I would think so because a lot of them were, but. Dude, then Bart Simpson, Bart Simpson started, started say, saying yeah, that shit. Be, I mean, mm-hmm. but this is where it started. I mean, I had never heard that before. Right, yeah. Um, and not even close, bud. I mean, how many times did you fucking say that? I said yeah. it all the time. Back to Molly Ringwald with her starting <clears throat> to care, right? Right, dude. It's the age old story. It's the girl of the bad guys one. Uh, that's my second, that's my that. second, my, my own song reference of this podcast. Because <laughs> we did 1985 earlier. <laughs> Holy shit. I'll get them all in before all it's. Right. Oh, seeing finger gestures from such a pristine girl. Not that pristine. Are you a virgin? I'll bet you a million dollars that you are. The funny thing is, she probably has a million dollars. He doesn't. <laughs> right. So that's a fucking terrible bet for her to make. Don't make that bet. That sort of made me a little bit uncomfortable on this one. Yeah. I don't know. Like the Just because of the daughter thing? No, I, I, I guess, and I'm 43 years old. I mean, when I first saw this, I was fucking 14 years old. So so just you're talking about the, the sexualization of her character? Sure. Made I mean, you uncomfortable? Yeah, and, and just any, that anybody would be picked on for not having sex is seems insane yeah. to me. Yeah. You know, I mean, unless you're like we're in this room and one of you guys hadn't done it before. Yeah, I wish I had waited till my third marriage to have there's sex. There's fucking proof. <laughs> There's fucking proof that all of us have had sex just everywhere. But uh, no one got that. Yeah, I got it. I just mm. fucking I never wow. know. See, I don't know when to chime in on those things because <laughs> I like you and I fucking hate that shit, <laughs> dude. Here's the thing. I think Mark will back me up on this. Oh, when shit. you decide to get into another long term relationship, it's, mm-hmm. I think Casey has to approve. Okay, I'm serious. No, I'm not saying because she's the fucking best judge of character ever, and she doesn't prejudge and all that. Right. All right. She'll fucking figure Done. that shit out. Done. Done. Awesome. I'm sure she probably doesn't want that responsibility. <laughs> probably not. <laughs> but she just got it. You and me. Two hits. Me hitting you, you hitting the floor. Anytime you're ready, pal. I don't want to get into this with you, man. Why not? Because I'd kill you. It's real simple. I'd kill you. And your fucking parents would sue me, and it'd be a big mess. Your parents would care sue me. About you to bother. <laughs> he wouldn't get arrested. His parents would sue yeah, him. It, that's such a, a high lawsuit. school fucking thing to say, man. <laughs> it really is. That is just that's a genuinely very well written. Yeah, no, I agree. Written. Um, yeah. Did John Hughes make up the two hits thing? Is that the first time we'd heard that? I'd never heard that before, for sure. I mean, the two hits, me hit you, <clears throat> you hit the floor. The floor? I don't because really I heard feel that like from people. After that, sure. Yeah, after yeah. that. But I don't know if he stole that from you know his childhood or... Anytime Judd Nelson is speaking to the teacher guy, he talks more like, I believe that violating yeah. fire codes and endangering the lives of children, it's it's genius. Yeah. It is. It, shows, no, it shows his intelligence level. He is. He's it's, a smart dude. Yeah. Do you remember this from high school? And I, I think you and I probably will acknowledge this a lot because musicians... You're pointing at Mark right now. I am pointing at Mark, but... As, as the two musicians in the room. No, 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 no. But, but I mean, like, we were musicians in high school. So kidding. the thing was is that all of like, my peers... I told you I wrote lyrics. ...got labeled as being completely stupid and absolutely no brains. They all made bad grades because they didn't give a fuck or whatever. Right. And, like, I made straight A's, and I was, like, very, very much not the norm. Yet... They're some of the smartest people I've ever known, and the ones that I stay in touch with are very successful, most right. of them. Mm-hmm. And that's an interesting thing, you know, because it's it's not just, I think so much pressure is put on kids at that time in their life, you know, to figure out what they want to be and fucking try really hard. And You always hear people say, oh, if I go back now, I would have done this and this and this. As far as a major, I still, to this yeah. day, there's not one thing that I could go, oh, shit, I should have did that. Right. I went I to college. I to play guitar. I went to college because... <laughs> If I went, my dad would pay for it. 
And I knew in my heart of hearts that if I didn't go right then, I never would. And so I went, I graduated in four years, first of my family as generation and generation and generations goes back, like first of my family ever to graduate from. My brother and I graduated the same year and he started five years before me. Wait, you um, went to college? I did. I have two degrees. Oh. Yeah. I did not know that. Well, actually three because I'm a third degree black belt. Okay, that's five degrees. <laughs> I have five degrees now. I'm not really a black belt. I have a, I have a black belt. No, in you're a black belt badge. in the water. I'm a black. Not outside I'm fucking of the water. so good at water karate. <laughs> I mean, like I watched The Matrix today, and I didn't even find any yeah, of that impressive. Too. No, I didn't. Even. <laughs> I mean, I can do all of that. Yeah. Put me in the deep end. Dude, are you kidding? In the fucking pool. Are you kidding? Yeah, yes. I never have to touch the bottom. That's how much kar- karate kicking I can oh do. I just spin God. for yeah. as long as I can tread water, I can fucking kick. We we should fucking go to the pool and do some water karate sometime. We should fucking do it. You want to do that? Yes, I do. Okay. I want to go there right now, except for it's so cold outside. Did we just become best friends? We did. Yes. Oh, are you Kick water ass. karate brothers now? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. We, have we told the Blood Brothers oh, story yet? Yeah. So, I don't remember. Well, it comes up every holiday because <laughs> this year at Halloween, Mark's wife, Jennifer, we're all sitting in the kitchen and she just goes, what do we feel like the vibe is going to be this Halloween? <laughs> and we're just kind of looking at each other like, uh, what are you, what are you, what do you candy, mean? I don't, I don't know. know. Like, what, what are you talking about? She goes, well, I was just thinking about inviting some of my actual friends. <laughs> But if it's going to be any sort of replay from last year, then maybe I'll just not do that. Yeah, and we were, we were both like, what are you, what talking, are you talking about? about? It was just like and chill hanging out in the like, kitchen. They're like, you fuckers became blood brothers last year. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, yeah. Oh, it's yeah. Like, and Casey's like, you're my dad's blood brother. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I'm sure you're both are clean from diseases and stuff, but if you weren't and you didn't know the other, no, was not Rich, clean. we don't think about that. We're badass musicians. That's okay? right. Okay. Yes, yeah, okay. so we. It's like I've never used a condom and, ever, and it's okay. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. <laughs> I'm I, dipped, I used to dip my condoms in whiskey and then I would light them on fire <laughs> yeah. to make sure it would stay clean. Yeah, fuck yeah. You just fucking <laughs> dip it in rubbing alcohol. Yes. But it burns no. a little. Jack Daniels. Yeah, yeah Jack. I would dip it. Yeah, fuck yeah. I'd dip my it. condoms in Jack Daniels Jack and light Daniels. them on fire before I put them on. I believe actually we that did. Could have we drank to do whiskey. With have we drank whiskey that night. We didn't drink a lot of whiskey. Yeah, that night. and I'm not really a big whiskey drinker, but I drank some that night and. Yeah, so anywho, we were like, no, we'll be fine on Halloween. Everything will be fine. We'll behave ourselves. And she didn't invite anybody. So yeah. anyway, you were there. Yeah, we that? saw your calves. How does one become a janitor? You want to be a janitor? No, I just want to know how one becomes a janitor because Andrew here is very interested in pursuing a career in the custodial arts. I say, your dad work here? I say that shit at least once a week. <laughs> that comes out. I mean, Because it's just like, hey, Brian, your dad work here? Like, I fucking say it all the time. Anytime we walk into a place, if you're fucking going to say hi to somebody randomly, I'm going to ask you if your dad works here. I'm sure that had to have been ad-libbed, right? I mean, God, it's so fucking good. Brian here is a cherry. A cherry? When have you ever gotten laid? I've laid lots of time. Name one. She lives in Canada. Met her at Niagara Falls. You wouldn't know her. Ever laid anyone around here? Oh, you and Claire did it. What are you talking about? Uh, nothing, nothing. Let's just drop it, okay? We'll, we'll talk about it later. No, drop what? What are you talking about? Well, Brian's trying to tell me that in addition to the number of girls in the Niagara Falls area, that presently you and he are riding the hobby horse. <laughs> did you guys ever, and be honest, did you ever lie about doing stuff with girls? When I was nine years old, I told my best friend that I totally did it with Aaron Gray from Buck Rogers. <laughs> <laughs> and oh did he God. believe you? Hey, Tommy, I just want to come out now and say <laughs> that didn't happen. When did you lose your virginity, though? <laughs> 16. Okay, wait a minute. Now that brings up a good point. Yeah. Lying about girls. Who lied about when they lost their virginity? I lied about it all the time. I lied about that. Yeah, everybody thought I'd lost it at 13 and I didn't. Yeah. I don't remember what the lie was or whatever, but it was definitely before I never lied. I, did. I had sex with my brother's girlfriend. <laughs> okay. True Are you story. serious? True story, yeah. I've talked Is this about a it. Sensitive in subject? No, no, no. I've talked about it in songs or whatever. Like he didn't even get mad at me. Wow. I mean, they broke up, but well, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we we did it. No, everybody growing up in sixth grade had come back from summer. Yeah, I totally did it, man. Yeah, totally did it. Well, I was on vacation with exactly. this one chick. I never lied about it. That's what I'm asking. I, I figured you were going to say that you didn't lie about it. But I had sex for the first time at 14 years old. Okay. And how old was the girl? She was 14. Oh, wow. Two 14-year-olds. Yeah, that usually, usually awesome. it's an older girl. 
Yeah, mine was oh, mine well, was my brother's age. Made, she's five no, years older than me. She was, was probably too. fifteen because she was okay, in my same minute, grade. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Well, wait she was minute. in my same grade. Oh, the story is starting all to change. Up. Hang on, hang yeah, on. okay. I was always a year behind everybody right. else in age uh-huh. in the same grade. So she uh, may have been, fi- but we were the same grade. Sure. Is yeah. what I'm saying. Totally, we were, we were in the, the same grade. grade. A naked blonde walks into a bar with a poodle under one arm and a two foot salami under the other. She lays the poodle on the table. Bartender says, I suppose you won't be needing a drink. Naked lady says, Oh, shit! Jeez! Christ almighty! So... Wait. Forgot my pencil. (laughs) I love it. (laughs) So what's the end of the joke? Is that out there anywhere? Yeah, I, I researched this. Okay. All right. So... Here's here's the, the hold on. Let me preface. Me and Eric have talked about this for years. Okay, and and we'll tell tell we'll, someone will start to t- do this and end it with oh shit, and then it's over. So if there is a punchline, this could be fucking groundbreaking. <laughs> so the joke is: a naked blonde walks into a bar with a poodle under one arm and a two foot salami under the other. She lays the poodle on the table. The bartender says, "I suppose you won't be needing a drink." The naked lady says, and then he falls through the thing. Oh, shit. And he says, oh, shit, forgot my pencil. Right. The original intent for this scene was for him to say, I forgot my pencil. And that was the punchline for when he fell through. No one could come up with a joke that ended with, forgot my pencil. Ah, interesting. And so he just told he told Judd to ad-lib something. And so that was... Judd just making up a just joke on the spot. Ju- There's so much ad lib in this movie. <clears throat> so there I, is no real joke. There is a joke book out there that has an ending to this exact joke, which is the bartender says, I suppose you won't be needing a drink. The naked lady says, I got these for my husband. The bartender says, good trade. That's terrible. There's a good one. What? The internet got together and came up with, I think, a, oh, a pretty good ending I hate to this the joke. Already. Okay, so so much. So th- there's been there's a forum. there's a movement there's a, forum. There's a movement movement to, to fucking it. finish this joke. Okay, <laughs> right. So the bartender says, "I suppose you won't be needing a drink." The naked lady says, "I definitely do." After what just happened to me, bartender says, "Oh my god, what happened?" Well, my boyfriend and I were just about to make love when out of nowhere he says, "I'm gonna pound my favorite bitch with my giant sausage." So I grabbed them both and got the hell out of there. Okay, I get it. I didn't write the joke. I know, it's just fucking terrible. It's not what I wanted. <laughs> this is the worst fake idea I've ever seen. You realize you made yourself 68? I know, I know. I goofed it. What do you need a fake ID for? So I can vote. He made that up. Ad-libbed. Really? Yeah, He, which is it's genius. Yeah. Young Republican club. Yeah, yeah. He, made himself, he made himself 68 years old. He's like, I goofed it. I'm about to play a clip, but is this the part you were talking about in the pre-show? Yes. By the way, if you are interested in pre-show, post-show, and outtakes, um, and outtakes you can go to patreon.com and search Jarrett Goes to the Movies. And I think for as little as like... $3 uh, a month, you get the outtakes. Yeah. And then... And then uh, Five dollars, you get the outtakes and the pre-show and post. We're talking probably like another hour or two of content Easily, yeah. each each week. So uh, you know, if you're digging it, then great. Uh, yes, this is the one that I didn't remember. I didn't. Uh, so we talked about this on the pre-show that there was a scene that both of us didn't remember happening, and it was the teacher and Carl sharing beers down in the basement. Carl, I've been teaching for 22 years. And each year, these kids get more and more arrogant. Oh, bullshit, man. Come on, Vern. The kids haven't changed. You have. (sighs) You took a teaching position because you thought it'd be fun, right? Thought you could have summer vacations off. And then you found out it was actually work. That really bummed you out. These kids turned on me. They think I'm a big fucking joke. Come on. Listen, Vern, if you were 16, what would you think of you, huh? Hey, Carl, you think I give one rat's ass what these kids think of me? Yes, I do. You think about this. When you get old, these kids, when I get old, they're going to be running the country. Now, this is the thought that wakes me up in the middle of the night. That when I get older, these kids are going to take care of me. I wouldn't count on it. And I don't remember that scene. Do you, Mark? 
I don't. Neither of us do. Maybe it was added. This scene hit me as an adult. Of course not as a kid. This scene affected me the most. Because it explains why he is the way he is, you mean? It gave depth to this character who's in the entire movie. And it gave him purpose. It gave him meaning. It gave him a, a reason for being in the movie other than just fodder for the kids to make fun of. Sure. And it hit me. Yeah, these kids are the ones that are going to be fucking taking care of me when I'm yeah, old. You hope, yeah. It's that scene in Back to the Future when she's topping off the glass of vodka. Oh, and the yeah, yeah, sure. It's the scene where, got your hands full, Kath. And this one. <laughs> it's job. that scene that I, I just right. sort of emotionally just, connect to for some reason. I just think it's uh, another scene that, that adds to his character. I wouldn't say it's like a super important scene. Right. I mean, it's almost like the, uh, you know, when he raises his hands to Judd Nelson, that, that like you were talking about, that, mm-hmm. that fear. I mean, yeah. you see the real person right there. Mm-hmm. You know, I think, I think in that aspect, yes, it's an important scene, but... It, I don't know. I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't the say the best scene in the movie. Me. I mean, I will say the, and the scene is all really a, um, a a character reference, not anything that really has to do with the rest of the movie. What Rich is saying, though, he actually just argued his point really well for his own self. <laughs> no, no, no. And, and this isn't a bad thing, but that scene, you got your hands full, Kath, in uh, in vacation, right? Really hit you in a way, and you felt an emotion there. You felt an emotion went in Back to the Future where the mom is hitting the bottle of vodka and you know that's when she knew that she was going to be in love or whatever. Right. She's obviously this miserable right. fucking person. So I see why that may have meant a lot to you in that way. I just don't feel like it's that kind of movie. It changed the movie for me. Sure. It, I mean, changed, it changed the it. movie because you saw him differently right. than you saw him before. To me, I still see him as a fucking pompous asshole. I think it made him a person – that really wants Bender to change, really wants to get him off the wrong path and into the right path. And and, and, and it's it's multi-layered. Like, yeah, I just wanted a fucking easy job, but, you know, I want these kids to grow up and be good people, too. Because these are the kids that are going to fucking take care of me one day. I get that, but I, I don't feel like if, if that was his motivation, I don't feel like he would be speaking to them the way that he does. And you know, cracking skulls and shit is like something a coach says. Yeah, but, okay, so none of your coaches gave a shit about you? No, I think my coaches probably did in some way. Not not a lot. I mean, in that area of my life, playing junior high football and things like that, I was 100% a fuck up. And, you know, I I was not (laughs) popular with the coaches at all. But I'm sure that they cared about me because I'm fucking funny as shit. But, (laughs) you know, that just goes without saying. But, again, I don't really think that it's a caring. I think it's more of just like a giving up. The way that that he talks to Bender is not a way that people should be spoken to in that type of situation, in my opinion. Yeah, I I understand. All pretty bizarre. Some of us are just better at hiding it, that's all. How are you bizarre? He can't think for himself. She's right. Do you guys know what, uh, what I did to get in here? I taped Larry Lester's buns together. What happens here is Anthony Michael Ho goes, that, was, that you? was you? And he's like, you know him? He's like, yeah, I know him. And like, you could see in his eyes, like, fuck, I know this story. This is fucked up. Okay, let's say that happened in your high school. Everybody would know about that. Yeah, I mean, I guess so. You know, I mean, I... I something like that. And also the flare gun thing. You, well, you, we're, yeah, talking, we're talking exactly. about a huge-ass school, though, right? We're yeah, talking about yeah. a giant California school, probably, right? Well, yes. Where, is this, where does it take place in? It's Shermer, Illinois, actually. Illinois. Yeah. 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 Illinois, yeah. Illinois high schools are fucking huge. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard all about those no, places. No, but it's... It's, it's like 16,000 graduating Chicago. class. I mean, I don't know that it's like the biggest school in the world, but you're right. You know, the thing is, is that I think... A lot of things get passed around really quick, and a lot of things don't. And you find out later that these things happen. You know, you find out that the guy got caught masturbating in his truck instantly, and then you find out that. Did you get caught masturbating? I in didn't your truck? know, but the dude that did it, man, uh, this is a true story. I'm not fucking around. The guy who did was like this super popular kid. He was the kicker for the football team. Not even sure it's true, but it got passed around that <laughs> well, he fucking sure got caught. He, that, that, no, that he, that he got caught masturbating in his truck right. or whatever before school. Right. And dude, that guy's life just spiraled wow. downhill, man. I mean, he was fucked. Nobody would talk to him. He ate lunch by himself. It was first thing oh, in the morning. Man. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I mean, sometimes you get those sleepy boners. Yeah. You know, yeah. half asleep. I get it. 
no reason. Sleepy boner. There's only one way to get rid of it. I was the kid who just was like, dude, everybody jacks off. We all fucking do it. No, I don't do that crap. Whatever. Yes, you do. You fucking do it. <laughs> we all do. It's fun to fucking touch yourself. You know, I, I used was to call the opposite. I used to call it the big talk. I'm like, it's time we have the big talk. I know you masturbate. My first wife didn't even know I masturbated. What? Yep. Didn't talk about it. Uh, that's that's insane. Your your first wife knew you masturbated. You no. just didn't talk. No, about we it. talked about it during the your end. Your first wife no. masturbated, and so did you, and she knew that you did. No, you're not listening to me. I am trying to. At the end of our marriage, we talked about it. And she legitimately thought that I didn't because I said I didn't because I didn't want to be embarrassed by it. And so she even stopped. So you she fucking... Stopped, whoa, whoa, whoa. She stopped what? <laughs> Masturbating. No, she didn't. No, she, did. she told no, you she, she did. did. No, she did. Oh, uh, what? Rich, Richard. she told you she did, dude. No, this is fucking she crazy. Why would she not... tell me that? There's, There's no a reason... reason why you're divorced. No, 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 no. There no, wasn't... No. All, they, uh, all, they couldn't have been the best communication ever. <laughs> Or he, truth, obviously. Yeah, there's Coming no out of her way that mouth. happens. Okay. What, I, I so know you it hid the, masturbation from the world until you were 30 yeah, years old? Yeah. 28 or so. Really? Yeah. That seems silly. It is. It's well, such a looking silly, back on it now, it's It's such a silly, silly thing it to is, hide. I, know, and I remember the first time somebody, actually, he was talk, He was a guitar player. So we were talking guitars and shit, whatever his game was. Yeah, we're, everybody was like, okay, I owned up to it. Yeah, we were jerk off and we were, we were making fun of ourselves and whatever. And I was like, what the fuck ever, dude? Yeah, you know, I, I don't, don't do, do that, that shit. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. Right. But, you know, once it's fucking out of the bag, it's hilarious. Exactly. It's funny as shit. And, dude, and not only that, and, dude, and all of my band will tell you this. This is because I got them all out of the closet on that shit. Right. And they will tell like, how just, they were rejuvenated. Like, they oh, yeah, weren't yeah. hiding behind anything anymore. I had, oh a, my sex, God. I had a sexual such, revolution after my first There's such a weird fucking shame with it yes. for no reason. Yes. That's the, But you know why? Because our dads didn't fucking talk to us. <laughs> right. You got Band I, things are different. Cause, I mean, cause, like you said, once you're out in a row with somebody, it's like, dude. you're going to be sitting in a fucking room for fucking 10 hours or on a bus or whatever. It's like, all right, I'm gonna go rub one out. Be right yeah, back. Yeah, exactly. We used to have a spot when we were in the in the van. We had a we had a 15 passenger van. No, actually, it was a custom van at the time. So uh, we had it was two bucket seats, two bucket seats, and a bench behind the bench. If you were back there, you were whacking off, and nobody was allowed to look over. So our drummer at the time's name was Lance. We called it Lanceylvania. <laughs> And so you, you would there. just be like, hey, I can eat 15 minutes back in Lansylvania real quick or whatever. <laughs> yeah. And you're right. I mean, see, I'm so glad. <laughs> the thing is, it's so hard to explain to your daughter, like, band dynamic about like. Well, no, I've never been able to say anything to her about wait, it wait, either. Wait, wait. That we, sounded weird. It no, sounds but, like you just said you were trying to explain to your daughter. No, 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 no. Mark's daughter. My, my, daughter. my wife. Thank you. We do so much gay shit. It's, I mean, it's ridiculous. It just gay shit is it's everywhere, and nobody's gay. <laughs> okay, and she's just like well, all you guys are fucking point, gay. At one point, uh, all right, brunch club, shut the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at one point, I was living in, in an apartment in New Orleans with like oh God, I'm in trouble. five strippers <laughs> and like two of my band buddies. Yeah, and you know where you slept on the couch or a bed or wherever. I mean, it didn't fucking matter. Sure, it was a place to crash. Yeah. You know? Well, when we moved in there, it was just us. The band kind of moved in. You know how that shit works. Yep. And they had this little bell, like a bell, that would sit by the TV. And so anytime any of the girls would have an orgasm, they would come out and they'd ring, ring the, the bell. bell. <laughs> so the first time I realized, okay, this is going to be some funny shit, our drummer, Donnie, was in taking a shower by himself. Right. <laughs> he comes out of the shower and <laughs> rang the bell. He immediately walks over to the bell and goes, <laughs> <laughs> and so of course funny. we all start fucking just dying and laughing. Sure. And then it was just like, you know what? This is nothing that needs to be fucking hidden from no, society. I would, I, in you know? hotel rooms, I'd walk out and I'd just be like, hey, if you're the next shower and you hear any like children <laughs> screaming, it's because they're going down the drain right now. <laughs> You seen some of the dopes that take shop? I take shop. You must be a fucking idiot. A fucking idiot because I can't make a lamp? No, you're a genius because you can't make a lamp. What do you know about trigonometry? I could care less about trigonometry. Bender, did you know without trigonometry there'd be no engineering? Without lamps, there'd be no light. Okay, so neither one of you is any better than the other one. Here's the thing. The I think <clears throat> you're a genius because you can't make a lamp is really smart. Yeah. That's good writing. Yeah. I know it's kind of a weird time, but I was just wondering, um, 
what is going to happen to us on Monday? When we're all together again. I mean, I consider you guys my friends. I'm not wrong, am I? No. So on Monday, what happens? Are we still friends, you mean? We're friends now, that is? Yeah. Do you want the truth? Yeah, I want the truth. I don't think so. This happened to me a lot. But there would be people who, and I, I'll be honest, I was on both ends of this, that for some reason, maybe our parents were friends or something. And in social situations with them, we were friends. We would see each other in school, and maybe it was a wave, but right. walk right past each other. Yeah. Or you would know somebody from whatever situation. And again, I was definitely guilty of kind of not being the one to want to say hi to somebody. And now I'm feeling really guilty about that right right this minute, actually, because that's a fucking dick move. But I think more I was I was on the other side of that. Yeah. You know, of the, you know, someone being more embarrassed to to be friends with the, you know, with the fat band guy with the long hair, you know, kind <laughs> right. of thing. What's the gun for, Brian? Just forget it. You brought it up, man. I can't have an F. I can't have it. I know my parents can have it. Even if I ace the rest of the semester, I'm still only a B. Everything's ruined for me. I, in the fourth grade, I took a carpenter's knife to school and I told everybody it was a switchblade. And they believed me. And I fucking had it. And you just. And you just stub it out. There's a kid named Mike Churchill. And after school, I like fucking pulled it on him and like was just being a fucking dick. And, <laughs> and, and literally would have never done anything. And just like, yeah, you fucking want some of this kind of... It's just so stupid trying to make my friends, impress my friends. And so I got called to the principal's office the next day. And the funny thing is, is that like there were no parents involved. Like it, it, it just, if that happened to me today, oh, like God. I would have a label on me and I would be fucked forever. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. basically I had to give it back. I had to give the thing up and I got licks. You know, right. I got five licks, right? which fucking hurt. But y'all ever get licks? Fuck oh, yeah, fuck I got, yes. I got a lot of licks. Paddle, they used to fucking display the paddles. They decorate them. Yeah. And like say, look at how big my paddle is. Yeah. And I'm going to oh, whoop no. your ass we had, with. We had two coaches, the Coach Nutt and Coach Felty. Believe it or not, taught history. How they many, always how do. many coaches taught they history? They all teach history. They anyway, so they were like at the end of the school, and they had their own little like portable buildings outside and stuff. And we had both of them in uh, football. Well, they both had their own paddles that you had to sign if you got your ass kicked. Mm -hmm. ah, and of course, they were their own witnesses. You always sure. had to have another teacher. And so, you know, if it was three <laughs> licks, they were agging each other on. Are you kidding me, Phil? Yes. Come on, you can do better Dude. than that, man. Come on, come yes. on. Yes. Yeah. Pow, woo! Did you hear that? Coaches Boom. can hit hard too, man. Fucking hard as shit. Coach Osborne fucking lit into me, man. Like lift me up onto the they desk. They got off on this stuff. Oh, God damn it. Like, I, And I had licks, so I got a lot of licks in grade school from Mr. Smith. I get Did to you ever get licked, like, you ever get paddled or spanked or belt by your dad or anything like that? My dad Did only... Did you just ask him if he ever got licked by I, his dad? My dad never licked licks. me. No, my dad only <laughs> spanked me one time. He didn't even try, and you could tell it fucking killed him, and so no. My mom used to beat the shit out of me. <laughs> Literally. My dad tells a story of, like, coming home and being like, I had to pull your mom off you or whatever. <laughs> She's like, oh, Dan. And I'm like, no, I fucking remember that. He did. He was telling you, fucking stop. Like, long ways where the belt would hit you twice. You know, like it would fucking hit you in the ass and wrap around and get your dick. Right, right. Oh, oh man. No. Just fucking just like would lie. It. She could pick me up, you know, back then. She's holding you up by one arm and just fucking wearing you out. Right. You put your hand back there, it fucking hurts. Well, Mark knows the story. So I paddled my son one time. One time. And it hurt. I mean, I fucking got paddled. On a regular basis. When you were a kid. It, he had been a, a jerk for months. Whoa, whoa, this hold was on, hold on, hold on. This. So you got licks in school, but did your parents spank you? With belts, yeah. With belts, my dad's over. belt, yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, so I paddled my son one time. It, it it didn't just, you know, hey, I'm mad at you, paddled. It had been building and building and building and building and building. Right. And I was like, that's it. And it was very calm. I had to drag him to his room because he was throwing a fit. So I drug him to his room. I go, lean over. I'll be right back. Paddle, boom. And he cried and stuff. But he was perfect for like two years after that. Two years after that. Right. But I've never heard the end of it. Yeah. So Jack got spanked. Uh, like he's still mad at me to this I day. I only about spanked it. Emma once. Jack got spanked a bunch, like in his like three and four year old right. uh, area. Um, Everett never. No. I don't, yeah, I don't. but that's just, you're just like talking a little swat on yeah, the Yeah, a little swat. Yeah, that, yeah I mean, no paddle. No yeah, paddle. No, no, no. I never, but he, no, he was 
he was 13 or something. Oh, shit. Jesus Christ. This day and age, like that How motherfucker. How old were you when you got licks at school? No, 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 but not at home. <laughs> What's the difference? My mom slapped me across the face a couple of times, and I she used to have, that. like, fake nails and shit, and that it would go, <laughs> one time it went in my ear, and it fucking hurt so bad. Like it popped off and went in your ear? No, 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 oh. no. That would be really fucked up. Like a leaf but, press like, on? But, like, she, she hit me, and the her nail went into into my fucking ear cavity or whatever, and then scratched me in there, and that, that hurt worse than her popping me. You know? I'm pretty I, sure you deserved it. I fucking hit her back, too, man. Just fucking right, <laughs> right in the tits. I didn't really. <laughs> Just fucking hit her right in the pussy. I'm gonna cut. <laughs> oh my god! I'm I'm calling your mom I'm right now. I'm gonna cut out the no, I didn't part. What? I'm no. Do not yeah, edit yeah. my jokes. He was talking about suicide here, right? Yes. That's why he got the gun. That's why he got the gun. He just didn't realize it was a flare gun or something. Yeah. So it ends up being a flare. Gun. And it goes off in the <laughs> locker. locker and it burns. When you see that at the beginning. Laughs. And why you don't know you? why. There's a burnt locker. You yeah. saw that. At the and beginning. why is he bringing a gun to school to kill himself? I don't know. Well, he's well, probably why crying do kid, after kids help. do it all the time. I, I mean, guess it's you're a right. Cry for help. I mean, it's yeah. in a backpack or something. They're going to do it, and they can't do it at home because they're, they'll get in trouble. Do you guys ever contemplate suicide ever? I think everybody contemplates it. I think it's definitely gone through my head. You know, not as an adult, but I mean, it went through my head as a kid a few times. I mean, you know, and like I would do the thing where I would say to my mom, "I'm going to kill myself" or whatever. Right. Um, I did it twice. Once when they... You they, contemplated it? Once was when I was 14, after I lost my virginity, my mom found out there was a note she found. And so she, she grounded me and from seeing her. And so I'm boiling with hormones. And I'm just like, my life is over. I can't Actually, see this you girl should, anymore. Actually, you should have had a whole lot less hormones. You think so? Yeah, because you just blew like your first. <laughs> yeah. <major laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You should have been like, ah. Uh, and you remember that. That's, that's strong. Because yeah. I, I, I... Okay, so... That was the first time. A more in-depth answer to your question, I don't remember specifically. Mm-hmm. So that's big. I mean, if you yeah, actually if you remember, remember yeah. specific it, things, I don't then remember that's fucking crazy. Like, I wanted like I wanted that's to, like real. find pills and you know what I mean? I just I just wanted See, I ran pills away. Is such a Did fucking, you guys run away ever? No. No. See, no. I ran away from home. Um it wasn't a a very, a very good attempt at it. I just went to a friend's house and, See, running away and pills are the two things that you want to get caught doing. Right, because I mean, everybody that took pills, they get their stomach pumped. And yeah, I didn't do fun. it. Right. I didn't do it. Right. I actually made a kind of a deal with myself uh, at some point, but um, and then the second time was after my first marriage. I mean, I was a hold on. What was the deal? Mess. What was the deal with yourself? Um, the deal with myself was if I ever get to the point to where I want to kill myself, yeah. legitimately kill myself, uh-huh. just fucking sell everything I have and go live on the beach and be a beachcomber or, or bartend like Tom Cruise on cocktail. What because are you talking about. What do you so mean? Why wouldn't you just do that anyway? If That's that, what I'm you saying. Have to, no, but you have to get all the young, uh, no. You, but you young. have to get to the point of killing yourself before you're going to go and live the fucking dream. That's not the dream. How is it not the dream? What is that? You're off the grid, dude. It's the yeah. fucking best. That no, is the dream. It, okay, <clears throat> it's the dream. You would like have all of the vagina. So I should go do that right now, even fucking though I have like, responsibilities. If you have, like, what are your responsibilities? I got a daughter who's 16. Okay. Okay. This is before that, though. But I have a job. I have a house. Who gives okay, a the fuck job about that? So the why job and the house don't so you get that? You so get that kid into fucking college and go fucking live the dream. <laughs> so you're telling everyone who's listening now no. that they should quit their jobs no. and go live on a beach because that's the dream. No, I'm telling you that because that's what you would have done. That's not everybody's dream. If you were gonna, you were gonna kill yourself or fucking go live on a beach and be a goddamn bartender and get all the vagina. The thing is, is that obviously that's where, where you wanted to be anyway. No, it's it's not where I wanted to be. It's just that was like the, you that's know, the deal you made with yourself. That was the deal I made. I, I like, like the deal though. I mean, I think that's good. I just the the problem is if you were actually suicidal and like really fucking having those thoughts, you w- there's no way you'd have the capacity to. I don't think it was suicidal. It was just a bad time in sure in my life. We all went through it, man. I mean, everybody goes through that as a teenager, and it's fucking terrifying, yeah. man. And I don't want my kids to go through that yeah me neither but they will yeah i'm sure they will which it's never an option by the way never no, it should no. never be you that's know what? the thing is here's like, the thing about suicide way out. suicide is the most selfish thing you can do go live on a beach. all you fucking do is hurt everybody else. go be tom cruise on a beach that's right. right that's all you gotta do that's it i don't think that's the dream i just think that's like well i mean what it sounds pretty awesome to me it sounds it's... fucking kick-ass to me <laughs> I would fucking go do fishing tours and diving tours. It's <laughs> now, first of all, hey Rich. Oh fuck it. Let's do it. Let's all do it together, okay? 
Yeah, just if, fucking if we blow ever, everything else up. If we ever get really fucking drunk and we do a suicide pact, yeah. we're going to say, no, we're not doing that. We're going to go move to a beach. Nobody's doing a suicide pact. And we're going to we're going to start go over Blood Brothers. We have to We do. I you do go, have to follow I go. you. I you get go, it. I, go. I get it. I get it. Okay. No, fuck that. We go to fucking to a beach and yeah. we're going to have you a boat. Ridiculous. And we're going to fucking sell shrimp and necklaces. And necklaces from that shells we, that we make. We make from shells. Shells in our spare time. And scales. And scales. And Rich is going to pour the fucking kick ass drinks. Yeah, and he's going to spin bottles and shit. It's going to be fucking awesome. <laughs> Do right. that. Do that, guys. Yeah. Fucking in. So, Ali Sheedy's character's message was like the reason that she was who she was and the, her journey through the film was. Hey, just dress a little better. Put some makeup on, and that solves all your problems. That's what it's. Uh, didn't it? Didn't it seem a little cheap? Yeah, it, but in high school, that's kind of the fucking. That kind of fixes okay, a bunch of shit. Point, valid point. I, but that is the message, though. Well, I think it's more of just. I mean, I see what you're saying. Yeah, but I, I do feel like also it's like she was just like the person that doesn't really want to fit in. Yeah, exactly. And and, and she's the basket case. Sure, right. and so. You know, you you make a few little movements here and there, and all of a sudden you do. I mean, she, you know, she's with the fucking jock. But isn't it funny? Isn't it funny how the clothes you wear define you? One hundred percent, especially in high school, mm-hmm. and when later in life with the fucking douchebags. Right. Okay. So douchebags in a second. Here's the thing about high school now. It's not a douchebag. It's rich. not like that anymore. Like it's that. so. Like, I didn't know it's going it's with that. so fucking weird. Now, because again, we talked about this earlier, but they're the cowboys are the cowboys, the freaks are the freaks, the 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 these guys are these guys. It's it, they all wear the same shit now. Mm-hmm. There's no there's no real. All the lines are so blurred. Yeah, yeah douchebags, yeah. for example. No, though? I'm talking about high school. I'm no, talking about when I we know were what in high you're school. talking about when we were in high school. Yes, it's not like that anymore. Just, well, I don't know because you got the you have to have you have to. I be. think it's like that. I, I think you ha- it has to be. You have the Abercrombie, you got the Coles. The Coles, Judy, 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 dude. The suicide thing was kind of heavy. Yeah, you brought that up. Okay, what was the second time? After my first, after my first marriage. Oh, as an adult. Yeah, that fucked me up, dude. Really bad. You, you had two children. I did the whole. I'm gonna no, just swerve into oncoming traffic hold on, hold on, hold on. For, a, for a little bit. See, that's so fucked up. It you're is gonna hurt, up. You're gonna hurt dude, somebody else. I was messed up. You're gonna hurt somebody I was else. messed up. He was a fucked up motherfucker. Um, I didn't do it. Calm down. No, I know, but even if it would enter your mind, like you did, you wouldn't just think, you know, this is going to hurt my children a lot. Yeah, that's why I'm still here. Yeah, well, I'm glad you're still here, man. For <laughs> real. Uh, and I'm totally fine. I'm two not Halloweens ago, anymore. I really wouldn't have cared. But, <laughs> and just being honest, I didn't like you very much. And now you're, it wasn't Halloween. I like it you now. It was fucking Halloween, no, man. No, that's when you said you liked me. Oh, that's true. Yeah, I like. And you got in trouble by your second wife for coming over after <laughs> yeah. she went to bed. Yeah. And then we all sat outside and drank at the table or whatever. And you, dude, you I got in so much trouble, Jennifer. Uh huh. I mean, his Jennifer, right. not my Jennifer. Yeah, yeah. You his, do love your Jennifer too. I do love my Jennifer. Yeah. yeah. His Jennifer used to piss me off a little bit. Yeah. How so? Because you didn't get to go fucking go places where I really wanted you to be. Kind of like, like you are now. Like my CD release. Okay, I'm, oh, I'm not, shit. Okay, here dude. we go. I'm not, <laughs> now <laughs> shit just got real, yo. Okay, first of all, Monday through Friday, I fucking have a fucking hellacious schedule. <laughs> Tuesday so through Friday. Saturday and Sunday is family time. Right. I cannot go to the brunch club and start drinking at 11 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I'm like the old days, I used to call you and say, come on, Mexican beer. On it, let's find a patio. Let's fucking go. Right. It's different. I cannot go to the brunch club. I'm sorry. That's all right. Yeah, also, it's easy also, for you to say now, Mr. Single, by the right. way. Like, also, it's easy it for you. Easy. It's easy for you to call him out on not doing shit. And yeah, right. I actually will say that you're kind of not a go-doer of things. <laughs> Dude, I'm, I'm cool with that. Well, he used I know, to be at my house have a every show. weekend. Every, every weekend. Yeah. I get it. Okay. But, but that said... <laughs> You're the new single guy. Right. It's fucked up for you to yeah. call anybody out. Well, he's, no, got, he's got a buddy. He's got a buddy he can do it with. Yeah, John. What? So, John. Who is this John character? He's um, a bass player, actually. I don't like a, him. No, you want to. I don't, I don't like, like this. You would hate I don't him. like this at all. <laughs> you would hate no, him. We're already sharing you, Rich. No, this John thing needs but to he's end. Like, he's like a 30-second like note bass player, though. Yeah. 
No, he's not just a ride E. No, no, no. Oh, no. He would never ride the E. He will never oh, ride Oh, does he the have e. five strings? Yeah, he's he probably oh, like six, eight. That's the fucking worst. <laughs> I saw a punk band the other day. Oh, uh, t- uh, Friday night. I went to Three he's like Links. like Claypool kind of. And I saw a punk band, and the bass player had a five-string bass, and it was killing me the entire night. It's like, that is so, it's the most unpunk rock thing ever. Not a, a punk rock band? Yes, oh, you need one fucking string. Yeah. One string. One fucking exactly. string. Dude, in the President's United States of America, the guitar player has two strings. There you go. We're fine. <laughs> Everything's good. Dude had a fucking five string bass. It's like, Why would you and like the guy's just like, and like the guy's just like, <laughs> that's exactly what it fucking sound like i swear to god it was the fucking worst <laughs> that is the worst if you're in a punk band and your bass player has more than four strings your fucking band sucks <laughs> <laughs> all of the dicks how is he a punk rock it's not even a blip, thing blip, 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 fuck blip. that i fucking want not. that guy to fall off the stage so hard <laughs> However, just, John is actually an amazing. He's like he's a fucking really virtuos- virtuoso. I get it. Uh, sure. He's, he's like great. one of those Jaco. So fucking- John fucking hangs out with you. That's the thing. Yeah, yeah. they're brunch club buddies. You guys are brunch club buddies. Yeah, yeah. we. I mean, we were in a band together. We, he was in Eden Machine for. Hey, hey um, Jarrett. For a, John, I'm the new while. singer for Eden Machine. I know. Hey, it's Jarrett. my fifth band. Yes. Jarrett. Um, John. Yeah. He's talking about is the president of the brunch club. Oh, he's the president. No, no, no. no he stepped you guys aside. have officers. Oh, he stepped yeah. down. Is there a treasurer? He stepped down. He's vice president. What is vice president? What are your duties? What are your duties of that? Um, Just show up and drink beer. Right? Okay. Yeah, but you had a Bloody Mary today. Yeah, I did have a Bloody Mary today. You drank vodka today? That's because we were all out together last night. Huh? You drank vodka today? Yeah, they have really good Bloody Marys, so... Yeah, I just needed a Mm. little hair of the dog. Okay, so what is John's? Why did he He, step down from being the the president? He is Secretary of Defense, I think. Secretary of Defense. 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 It's all the fact. He's the preventer of drama. Are there other brunch clubs that try to invade your patio? (laughs) No, he he defends us from drama. You know what else? Do you have, like, do you wear vests that have your your, uh, territory on the bottom rocker? (laughs) It says Sons of Brunch Club on it. Sons and then on the Frisco. bottom it says Frisco. <laughs> Frisco. Yeah, you know what? Frisco. That's a great idea, though. We I love waffles. So when motherfuckers meeting. show up in the parking lot wearing fucking Allen, <laughs> you, do you guys get into no, like... No, it's the, when the lunch club shows up. They're the just lo- like, oh, fuck you fuck. guys. Don't talk about the get lunch club. Get the fuck out of here. This is brunch club territory. Oh, and the fucking fuck. lunch club <laughs> tries to come in. It's Dude, I've seen this shit go down. Dude, it's fucking that, crazy. I don't even want to talk about it's that It's like kind Waco of at fucking at the goddamn fucking Twin the, Peaks. Yes, exactly. All over again. It's By the that. way, if anyone wants to Everybody's join. Everybody's throwing eggs at each other and <laughs> shit. It's fucking crazy. The syrup gets out of hand, dude. They're just oh. fucking pouring it all over. The, people like slip. splashing mimosas. They slip. People fall down. There's champagne and orange juice Everything, fucking all over everywhere. The, and not freshly squeezed. Are you fucking kidding Out me? of the goddamn fucking. What is it? Sunny D? It's fucking terrible. Oh, fuck. Yeah, and then they throw it at each other oh, and shit. Oh, my God. It's fucking crazy. Do they even have shrimp cocktail? No. But they have mac and cheese. I will never go there. Ever. I would be too afraid for my We life. fucking hate it. Hate that shit. By the way, if anyone wants to join the we just club. joined. We just joined Lunch Club. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're in Lunch Club. Did we just start a Lunch Club? We're fucking in Lunch Club. <laughs> we're gonna, and we get jackets. Sunday Woo! Lunch Club. We're making, we're, we're fucking cutting. We're, <laughs> what do we roll up in? SUVs, right? Like just yeah, not motorcycles. Yeah. We're in no. fucking, no, fucking SUVs no, with the windows tinted and shit. I don't have a motorcycle. Me I either. have an SUV though. I'm scared of motorcycles. My SUV's black too, man. Yours is too. Yeah, we fucking did it. We could roll up on that. You bitch. have to have a black SUV to be in Lunch Club. Black SUV. Also rule number bitch. one. Bitch. Everybody in Lunch Club has yeah, to talk fun. about Lunch Club. <laughs> Always. Always. Do, are you guys the only ones in the fucking restaurant now? Like, no, how many man, people that place go? Is packed. Always. How do you get a table that big, though? Um, well, we get there right when they open. It fills in pretty good. You guys are like waiting they at got the door. Great food. They're yeah. Amazing food. Yeah. Where do you guys go? The Holy Grail. The Holy Grail. Yeah. yeah. Eleven on Sunday. Holy Grail. That's where they open. Open membership. Yeah. Okay. And then you guys fucking go out to the car and blow each other like after right. you. Yeah. No, we just do hand jobs on tea bags. Hand jobs. Tea bags. You can do that in the restaurant. It's not even illegal. <laughs> and nobody even sees your dick. Nah. You you just like oh shit! I dropped my phone <laughs> under dro- the table. I dropped my balls oh. on your face. Oh. <laughs> oh. 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 
okay, I found it. <laughs> well, I will say this. I'm, I I do think that this movie has aged pretty fucking well. 30 yeah. years. It's still, it's still poignant. It's still relevant. It's a good one. I thought really not a lot of the dialogue seemed, you know, out of sorts. No, not really. Uh, th- there's one question I've had about this movie. How the fuck did Neo realize... <laughs> That Morpheus <laughs> was giving him the black or the blue pill. Oh, God, it's so confusing. It's either an Advil or a Dayquil <laughs> gel cap. <laughs> I know! Either I'm going to be up all night <laughs> yeah. or I'm going to sleep like a baby. <laughs> My head will never hurt again. Okay. Um. Anyway, <laughs> Rich is over it. <laughs> so fucking over it. Let's talk soundtrack. Love that song. Don't. Yeah, it's super weird how alternative music was... Not super weird, but I mean, that song to me makes me think of the explosion of alternative music at the yeah. time. You know, there was metal, there was country, and then U2 got big. But when you listen to the song, like the, the bass line, the guitar, little picking, like all those little pieces, it's a really well put together song. Yeah, definitely. Very well so. written and uh, yeah. very catchy. Um, and it, and I think it holds up well. Yeah, over time. it's it, agreed. I mean, thirty years later, Still I wouldn't think song. I wouldn't think that that song is thirty years old. Yeah, I could see that being released today. Yeah, um, the only other good song I found on the soundtrack was the Wang Chung "Fire in the Twilight." Mm, I don't remember that one. Uh, I can play it for you real quick. I don't remember hearing it in the movie. Actually. I don't remember Wang Chung having another song. <laughs> you know, like I Wang just Chung feel, tonight. I feel like their one song was Wang Chung. Yeah, and uh, as John Hughes did so often, he nailed the soundtrack. Except uh, for Plain Strains. <laughs> yeah, great addition to the movie, though, for sure. Overall, uh, I do feel like The Breakfast Club aged well. It was a great movie. Um, still stands up. It's a very great study of the American teenager and those relationships, those clicks, um, you know, awesome quotes, all that shit. My name's Jarrett. Uh, you can find me at J A R E T two one one three on Twitter or Instagram, uh, or at, uh, Facebook, Jarrett Reddick and, uh, Rich, what are our social media outlets? Facebook.com slash Jarrett goes to the movies and you can find us on Twitter at at Jarrett movies. want to thank Mark for being here, for waking up from his nap to come over here and hang out with us. We You're appreciate welcome. it as always. Um, and uh, so, and Mark, actually we talked about him a lot during the Star Wars uh, podcast because he was here. Right. Right. Also, I've already watched The Matrix, so <laughs> Yeah, so we'll see you on happy, Tuesday. I'll be we'll happy to sit see, in on see that. See you Tuesday night. See you Tuesday night. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Hey, uh, guys, seriously, if you're digging the podcast, why not throw us a bone? Um, we're loving doing this. We have a lot of other ideas we want to expand into other avenues and keep doing this. So you can be a supporter at patreon.com and search Jarrett Goes to the Movies or just go to JarrettGoesToTheMovies.com and click support. Um, if you're in the UK, I will be there in three weeks and uh, I'll be touring with MC Lars, the Dolly Rots, and Lacey. Later. We'll see you down the road. Dear Mr. Vernon, we accept the fact that we had to sacrifice a whole Saturday in detention for whatever it was we did wrong. But we think you're crazy to make us write an essay telling you who we think we are. And you see us as you want to see us. In the simplest terms, with the most convenient definitions. But what we found out is that each one of us is a brain. And an athlete. And a basket case. A princess. And a criminal. Does that answer your question? Sincerely yours, The Breakfast Club. Don't, don't